So what I found interesting is that you had managed millions and millions of dollars, had hundreds of employees, I guess, workers and so forth. Mm -hmm. A very complicated operation with a lot of different moving parts. But when you went to prison and you got your life sentence, you didn't actually know how to read. I didn't. You were illiterate. Totally illiterate. Which is mind blowing. Like I mean, I guess anyone who's illiterate in America, who's an adult, to me is is a bit mind blowing. But you never just bothered to learn how to read. Never. Never saw any any reason why I should read. I didn't see where it was gonna fit into my into my world. Okay. You know, if if a person don't understand, it's like trying to get a person to walk around with an empty bottle in their pocket. They're not gonna do it. For what? You right. know, why would I walk around with this, making my pants tight and taking up space I could put something that I'm going to use? Okay. And that's the way I looked at reading. But once you got to prison, then you realized that if you don't learn how to read, you're going to be in there forever. Yeah. And then you started learning how to read. Gradually. Just like I got in the drug business. I, I learned a lesson from the drug business when, when I was sitting there. Um, I started going back over my life, analyzing it. And then I learned that when I started in the drug business, I knew nothing about selling drugs. But I wanted to learn how to sell drugs. And I found out that any time that it was something that I wanted, I always found a way to get it. And I approached reading the same way, that it wasn't going to be easy, that I was going to have to start off slow. And, you know, my, my cellie made me my cue cards. And I started off with my ABCs, learning yeah. my sounds. And, and you were how old at the time? Um, ooh, 30 something. 30 something learning how to read at a first grade level, essentially. Yep. Yep. Lower than the first grade. Yeah. Because my daughter, she's four and she's reading better than I could read then. Wow. So your daughter's actually. I had more book smarts than you did at it. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, way, yeah. And my son, I had a six-year-old son who he just won reading and comprehension in the first grade at his school. Okay. So uh, definitely they were both better at, at reading than I was at, at 35 years old. But because you learned how to read, you're able to start reviewing law books in your cases, and ultimately you got your... Um, life sentence reduced to, what, like 10 years or something? No, well, first 25. 25. And then I won another appeal, and then I won another appeal, uh, and then I got it down to, I think, 17. Okay. So your lawyer, who you spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on, wasn't able to do as good of a job as you? No, he thought he thought that I was done. You know, he wouldn't even do the appeal. And even though he's, in the documentary, you'll see what he says. He found the issue. <laughs> okay. I argued that issue with him. Me and him debated this issue over the phone, like, hours. And he was like, no, Ricky, this doesn't fit you. Your conviction is from Texas, and your other conviction is from Cincinnati. That's different, you know. And I was like, no, it's not the convictions or where the conviction was at. It's the way the convictions happen. So, uh, um yeah, man, learning how to read saved my life. Yeah, literally. Now, you would refer to Nancy Reagan as a trap queen. <laughs> yeah, I was just joking that day. You know, okay. I mean, you know, it was... Well, I mean, you were, at your height, it was the 80s. So it was Reagan Ronald Ronald Reagan, yes. Ronald Reagan. Yes. Um, And then later on, you had... Bill Clinton. And under Bill Clinton, more black people went to prison than under any other president. Yeah, yeah. You know, in in retrospect, Bill Clinton actually said that their incarceration policies were not a good idea. No, none of them was. Um, Bill Clinton, he hurt a lot of people with, uh, he took away the 2255 as well. Which is? Well, it used to be with the 2255, if you ever came up with evidence that would prove your innocence, you could submit it under 2255. But under his administration, uh, you had a two-year window to come up with that evidence. 
and if you didn't come up with it in two years, um, if you came up with it a month after, oh well. Was there a big difference between Clinton's drug policies and, and Reagan's? Well, you know, I think Reagan really started to get tough uh, uh, yeah. uh, policy, you know. They implemented the, the 100 to 1 ratio, you know, crack the powder cocaine. Right, and, which, is, uh, which is crazy because ultimately they're just as addictive. Yeah, same drugs. I mean, Same drugs. All, all the scientists came in, you know, and testified that they were the same drugs. Uh, no different than, than, you know, but at the end of the day, the courts went with, you know, Congress's rec- recommendation. Um, and, you know, I got to have, have the guy who, who who drew up the policy. He's on the documentary saying that when they drew it, they all knew that it was racially motivated. But they still did it. They still did it. Okay. Uh, what Clinton did is... He saw how Ronald Reagan benefited from the, the war on drugs, so he came in and, and got even tougher. Yeah. You know, and this was sort of one of the one of the reasons why black people, I think, ultimately didn't really support Hillary Clinton. Because I think that most people of voting age had relatives who went to jail under her husband. That, that's very possible. Yeah. Um, I don't think that she really addressed us as a community either. Yeah. You know, didn't come out and embrace us. Um, quite a few uh, black politicians were supporting her. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, you know, blacks feel left out right now. We feel abandoned. Um, the unemployment rate is, is at an all-time high. Um, and, you know, it's bad in the hood right now. You know, most of the... Um, and and you know they use these entertainers to 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 to, to justify that that we were okay you know the LeBron Jameses and you know the Kobe's and the, um, the Jay Z's and the Danzels mm-hmm. to say and the Ofers that oh look you got Ofer but when you add those people up to the millions of, of have nots then it don't it don't equal out you know. Uh, couple months back I took some guys from North Carolina through downtown LA uh, to see the homeless population and they wanted to get some footage of it and uh, they couldn't believe it yeah Skid Row in LA is, is pretty fucked up not pretty yeah. way uh, way <laughs> fucked up I mean it's 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 you know I, I, I get to travel the country now and I get to go to a lot of places and I don't think that there's a, a Skid Row nowhere worse than Skid Row yeah. when it comes to homeless well you know you fast forward to 2017 with Trump in office, Jeff Sessions is now looking to make tougher drug laws once again. They're looking to start prosecuting marijuana, federal marijuana laws. It almost seems that they want to roll back, you know, the legalization of marijuana and yeah. so forth. Yeah, uh, I heard him say that um, that that uh, they want to get tough on the uh, recreational states. Yeah. Uh, um, but I don't think people are gonna go for it. I think, I think so people were fed up with the war on drugs. Um, they know that it was a, a crock of shit. Uh, excuse my French. Uh, they know that the news media all played a part of the uh, 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 the hype. Uh, I mean, I read one time that Harvard had did a study, and they showed that the babies that they were showing on TV as crack babies were actually alcoholic babies right you know babies who mother was on alcohol and and not crack cocaine and uh it was just so many games played on people that uh uh, made them lash out against people like me who basically was just trying to feed my family you know i wasn't out to to hurt nobody or, or see anybody do good but nobody gave me any other opportunities nobody came in and 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 would show somebody who was willing to be a hard worker. See, I was willing to work hard. You know, I was willing to work as hard as anybody. Right. And I think you had talked about how when you look at an average black kid from a poor neighborhood, the first successful business person they see growing up is a drug dealer. Absolutely. Absolutely. So that's who they... That's who they mimic. Yeah. That's exactly. who they respect. That's who they dress like. I mean, look at all the dress codes. You know, the, uh, Ice T did the documentary called uh, uh, Planet Rock. You know, and all those guys in there, RZA and everybody, talked about how they should like the way the drug dealers dress. Yeah, right. Yeah, Run DMC dressed like the drug dealers, even. 
Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So, so they love, I mean, hip hop loves drug dealers. I mean, really society. I ain't going to just say hip hop. Society. Society does. They love drug stories. Oh, Look yeah. at Al Pacino is still a star from Squad Face. Oh, yeah. I mean, Paid in Full is considered one of the greatest, you know, hood movies ever. You know? If you had to start off being a drug dealer today, how would you do it? Well, Completely from scratch. I would go out, collect me some cans and bottles, raise me up $25, find the biggest drug dealer that I can that would sell $25 worth, go and sell that $25, turn that into $50, and just start from there. I would eat as least as I can. I wouldn't buy any clothes. And I would save every dime that I had. What would you do not to get caught? Well, I wouldn't be flashy. I mean, the cops are not, <clears throat> and they got a tough job. You know, the cops got a tough job. Uh, and I, I'm not a friend of the cops either. <laughs> By no means. You see these scars in my face, that's from police brutality. You know, I've laid on the ground many times to sit on curves. Hundreds of times, uh, but they got a tough job, and catching me would be even a tougher job because I would hide from them. I would dress in ways that they wouldn't recognize me. I would drive cars that they didn't think I was driving. Um, I would just be somebody that they least expected to okay. be to be selling drugs. I would only way I would get caught is the city would be saying, Freeway Rick, Freeway Rick. Okay. And what you're describing is essentially what you went through. You were low-key, you dressed like a bum, but ultimately, you got caught. Yeah. Do you know of any drug dealers, major drug dealers, who ended up not getting caught? I'm sure some. Yeah, do, I know. Do I know. You personally, I don't want you to name any names, but you, do you personally know? I know a couple. Yes, you knew a couple. They never that went to prison. Never went to prison. They never went to prison. And how did they not go to prison? Well, they they got satisfied. Hmm. They quit. They quit. Yeah, you know, they made enough money, um, bought them a nice house, and 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 when when I say a major drug dealer. Seven, eight hundred thousand dollars is, is pretty major in the drug business. Okay, you know most people don't make a hundred grand. Yeah, uh, like people think. People think that selling drugs is just. I mean, it is easy, but it's not as easy as most people think. Everybody in it is not a millionaire. Everybody who's selling cocaine, heroin, or whatever it is is not rich. Uh, there's a few, uh, and there was a few that was able to get them a nice house, buy them a, a, a truck, a diesel truck, or a dump truck. And, and we're able to walk away. And start legitimate businesses. And start legitimate business. Yeah. My appetite was a little bigger. Yeah, you know, a lot uh, bigger. <laughs> I wanted multiple businesses. And my ultimate goal when I got in was to uh, to uh, get into the business and, and to get out. Uh, I think the lack of a formal education hurt me in a lot of ways. You know, not being able to uh, read applications and uh, 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 contracts the way that they needed to be read. Um, and also my background, you know, where my family came from. My family didn't have the wherewith to say, hey, Rick, let's go buy a McDonald's. And let's do the same thing with this McDonald's that you did with that $150 that you started with. Uh, let's turn this McDonald's into 10 McDonald's. Or let's turn um, this one car into 100 cars. Uh, my family wasn't, uh, uh, savvy, savvy enough to yeah. to show me how to do that. 